The Bible says in Daniel 2.21, He changes times and seasons. He sets up kings and deposes them. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Basically, the reality of our lives is that seasons come and go. There are highs and there are lows, mountains and valleys. And what you use to define yourself today might be gone tomorrow. Hello everyone, this is Daniela for Daniela Unedited. How are you doing? If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? So what is identity? Identity is simply who you are. It refers to what you place your worth in. In essence, it is what you use to define yourself. Identity is the essence of your being. Identity is you. Identity is that thing without which you wouldn't be you anymore. So let's start off with a big question. Who are you? This is how you get to know your identity. Ask yourself the question, who am I? Now, if we were to do a spiritual Google search on who you are, what would be the results? I'm Daniela. Let's say I do my spiritual Google search. Would it be Daniela is beautiful, Daniela is intelligent, Daniela is a wife, Daniela is a daughter? What would it be? Are these the same answers you get? Do you realize that all these are only seasons? All these can be taken away from you in the twinkle of an eye. If all Daniela is, is beautiful, what happens on days when I wake up and I don't look so beautiful? <laughs> if all Daniela is, is intelligent, what happens on days when my report card doesn't reflect the intelligence I thought I had? If all Daniela is, is a wife or a daughter or a doctor, what happens if one day, God forbid, I lose my parents, lose my husband, lose my job? So our case study for today is the Samaritan woman. You can read her story in John 4 verses 7 to 18. And we're just going to talk about all things identity learning from her. So what do we know about this woman? This woman had been married five times and she was currently with a side boo. I don't mean to be judgmental, but one, this woman was living a very unfulfilled life. Yeah, she was. If she had found fulfillment in a relationship, why would she have to move from relationship to relationship? Remember, identity is what defines you. Identity is a thing that fulfills you. This woman had put her identity in being a wife. And when every man disappointed her, she moved to the next. Isn't this a case of many of us moving from relationship to relationship in search of fulfillment? Could it be that we have placed our identity in the wrong thing? But wait, maybe the problem wasn't the Samaritan woman. Maybe the problem was her husband and her current side boom. <laughs> But that's not true, right? I mean, if she had married once and divorced and a second time, maybe yes, but five times, there was definitely an idol in her heart. So let's just pause and do this little game. I call it the idol revealer. Yeah, the idol revealer. So what we're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, what is that thing without which I believe I cannot live? What is that thing? If taken from me i'm definitely going to get into a depression and i simply can't see any hope or any light at the end of the tunnel be honest be honest that thing without which you believe you cannot live have you found it yet well if you have congratulations because that's the idol in your heart <laughs> let's pursue samaritan woman's life the second thing we see here is that Jesus addresses a deeper issue, a deeper issue than the marital issue. On a surface level, we might think it's just about marriage and remarriage, but to Jesus, it was an identity crisis. Again, do you know that thing that when you have it, 
you're all happy and joyful and when it's taken away from you you're all sad and gloomy that thing that determines your joy that determines your mood that determines the way you show up to the world yeah you've guessed it idol idol the third thing we see is that there is a cure jesus provides the cure in verses 13 and 14 of our passage guess what the cure is himself jesus is the cure jesus is the living waters with which we can never run dry what does this mean instead of placing your sense of fulfillment in roles in seasonal things place them in the person place them in a relationship with him a relationship that cannot simply be taken away from you a person who is ever present ever true if you drink of the wells of jesus you never run thirsty when you have jesus it doesn't matter the circumstances around you it doesn't matter the roles you occupy per season because jesus never changes the bible says he is the same yesterday today and forever i'm going to try to add into the description box a list of things that are established by our relationship with jesus a list of things the word declares we are and that's the beauty of all this because these things literally do not change they do not depend on what day it is on what year it is it does not depend on whether our health is giving what it has to give whether our looks are giving what they have to give whether the mirror is showing us what we want to see whether our grades on our report cards are reflecting what we want them to reflect these things are eternal truths now that's what you should be putting your identity in if the word of god says i am fearfully and wonderfully made that means i am beautiful it's an established fact it doesn't matter what season i'm going through whether i just got pregnant and i'm gaining weight or whether i just have an acne outbreak one morning it doesn't matter because the truth is this is who i am beautiful if the word of god says that i have the mind of christ that means i am intelligent and it doesn't matter there shall always be days when i don't make the a grade be days when i mess up but i can still hold on to the identity of intelligence because that's simply what i'm privy to based on my relationship with god the fourth thing we see here is that when you know your identity in christ there's no room for envy envy just goes out the back door because why why i totally get it now i get it i get it i totally get it <laughs> when the bible says that those comparing themselves by themselves are not wise because 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 it doesn't make sense envy is birth from comparison comparison is birth when we trade the absolutes from the word of god for the relatives from the world where we trade the absolutes from the word for the relatives from the world let me take it again <laughs> comparison is birth when we trade the absolutes from the word for the relatives from the world yeah yeah i'm preaching good i'm preaching good <laughs> so what do i mean as i said before the word of god presents us with absolutes if the word of god says i am beautiful that's an absolute truth i am beautiful irrespective of circumstances and irrespective of opinions i simply am beautiful but what happens is in the world is that we say but you're not as beautiful as so and so beauty standards have become a measure of how much we measure up to other people I mean who set those standards who gave them the right to establish those standards whose opinion is more important is it god's opinion stated as an absolute truth or man's opinion stated as a standard you have to measure up to let's be wise or oh, let's be wise so god will say a thing about me and i'll decide that no i am I am too um I'm too wise. God, sorry, but uh you said that 
but this is what i think <laughs> come on god of the universal i mean you get it omnipotent omniscience almighty god <laughs> will say a thing about you and you'll decide that you know better or that a man knows better or that another person's opinion is higher than his good luck the fifth thing we learn from samaritan woman's story is this identity boosts authenticity and i love this so much identity boosts authenticity when you find your identity in christ there's no room for people pleasing there's no room for trying to impress there's no room for walking on eggshells around other people you simply find the expression of who you are in its entirety because you've got a big god's backing you are free to be yourself there is no room for trying too hard to impress people or fake something that you are not and this third point i'm about to say is something i love so much even your challenges and even your failures are no longer a thing of shame because you know who you are you've already got the victory these failures are not failures they cannot be failures they are simply stepping stones to your success because the end is already established they are simply opportunities for you to learn so i'm no longer ashamed to be like i messed up here or i made a mistake here or i failed at this or that because these things don't define me what defines me is i've already got the victory i'm already successful christ has already paid it all you know he works all things together for my good the end must be good he who started a good thing in me will bring it to accomplishment there must be some accomplishments at the end of all this right so my failures are no longer a big deal there's this one thing i like to do can you just share in the comments a few things that people do because they lack identity in christ which are not authentic can you just share some manifestations of lack of authenticity that we often find <laughs> in circles in christian circles in secular circles because we don't know who we are in christ let's go to the comment section and the last thing oh my god i've already come to the end of this sharing the last thing we learn or we see or we observe is that jesus is the only valid identity all others are invalid <laughs> all other gods now so so yeah yeah if you're not west african you might not get it <laughs> but just to say jesus is the only is only true g he's the only one uh-huh uh-huh sorry guys let me come back and do you know jesus so that's a question i want to ask you at the end of all this do you know my savior do you know my savior do you know my king and have you heard that he loves you and that he will abide with you till the end if it's not Lord jesus christ i'm inviting you right now to give your life to him a simple prayer do you realize that you're a sinner in need of a savior who cannot save himself say lord i invite you into my heart i acknowledge that i have sinned against you please be my lord and savior and take over my life if you have done that welcome to the family welcome to the family <laughs> you can definitely contact me at my mail which will be in the description box i'll definitely want to accompany you on this journey and yeah i hope you find your identity in christ fully to the fullest expression of it and this video is dedicated to you know who i hope you have found your identity in christ <laughs>